everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and I am joined by the amazing Carrie Connor. She has wrote some very awesome books, and I am so excited to sit down and talk to her. Some of her books include Spells for a Good Time and 420 Meditations. At least those are the two I own. I know there's lots more out there. I believe you have 10 of them, if that's correct. And uh, yes, number 11 will come out next April. Awesome. So there's going to be links to description, uh, links in the description to all of these amazing books. Please go check them out. You can pause this recording at any time and go check those out through those links. And Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, oh, wow. It has been a crazy <laughs> couple of weeks. And it, it's funny because I had read your book when I first got it from Llewellyn, gosh, like a month ago now. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to reread it because my brain is foggy because of everything that's happened with all the SCOTUS rulings, all the craziness from, you know, just life, life at this point. Yes, and I know that feeling. Your book has been actually really inspiring to reread because I'm like, wow, this could not have come at a better time for me to reread this book. Wow. Okay. So apparently I needed to reread the book, but the cool thing about it is your book, uh, Spells for a Good Time is really just, I kind of feel like what we all need right now. We all need some good positivity in our life because we're just, you, you know, what's crazy is when we started writing it, we thought, wow, we're really going to need this with the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we only had it was just the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was only the pandemic. And look at everything that has happened since. Yes, <sighs> ma'am. It, 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 it's yeah, it, it's, it is needed now. Things yes. have gotten crazy. Things have gotten very crazy. And I know a lot of people are having a real, real hard time. And it, it is, it's hard. I mean, to, to say that people are are depressed is is not really even accurate at this point because <laughs> no. we should be we should be we should be depressed we should be pissed we should be we should not be happy about what's going on no i mean the fact that we think we need a piece of paper to tell us we what rights we have over our own body to begin with is is insane but to then be told that we don't have we don't we don't yeah. have the right absolutely um, i'm i'm sorry i i don't know <laughs> no <laughs> i i feel this in my no. soul <laughs> uh it, it's really a crazy time and yeah uh as someone who's chronically ill having a a pandemic to still be dealing with because the pandemic pandemic is still not over we're just exactly dealing exactly. with all sorts of other shit on top of it to make it go oh well that's gonna be back burnered because this is way more important right now oh, yeah well you know what they back they back burnered they really did they put the pandemic on the back burner a long time ago mm -hmm. and I, I, I lost a lot of family. I lost a lot of family and not even, I mean, some of them were, yes, they were older people, but the most recent one was 54 and had a ton of autoimmune issues. So we spent the two years trying to protect her. And this was my grandchildren's other grandma. So protecting her meant things like not seeing my grandchildren and hugging them. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of December last year, she went to a chemotherapy appointment and got COVID and died two months later. Oh, that so, is... yeah. And, and I mean, that was just this year that was, she died in, in March. So, I mean, we're still very much living in it. My, one of my other granddaughters, her classroom got shut down again yesterday for, for her, her daycare because there there's COVID and people seem to forget that. Yeah. COVID COVID is still a thing. Or they're just not going to make a big deal about it anymore. They don't care. We have proven our government does not care about the people <laughs> at all. And the one thing I've noticed that they have managed to do, I, I think they're going to manage to tick off both sides completely. 
You know, I mean, the, the government has talked for months and almost years now, uh, you know, with the pandemic, my timeline just kind of all runs together at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But truthfully, they have literally talked about how the country is so divided. We may not be divided much longer if you keep putting out crap like you've been doing. Well, yeah, and, you know, we I mean, like, united against you. you. you, you have, <laughs> I, I know there's a difference between Republicans and Trump supporters. There is. I, I have to keep reminding myself that. But I don't think people understand that the reason why Congress goes through all of these public hearings is to sway public opinion before the DOJ starts arrest. Because mm -hmm. if if they can't convince people that Trump should be arrested you're going to have another January 6th when he is arrested. But now you're going to have him. He's going to get arrested there. I know you can tell they're going to press charges. There's no way they're not pressing charges. But at the same time, now we've got the Republicans getting the difference all of that by cutting all of their rights. So you're going to get the people to unite on burning it all down. Yep. That, that's that's how they decided to unite us, not to unite us on compassion and empathy and love for each other and a government that works for the people and cares for the people. They decided to unite us instead on putting us against them and wanting to just tear it all apart and start over. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. It, and astrologically speaking, that's what's supposed to happen. So, okay, I just wish you would hurry up. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, the funny thing is, like, I, as of which myself, you know, seeing all of those signs, the astrological signs and seeing all the stuff, and it's like, I don't know exactly what, astrology is not my strong suit, but, you know, I'm like, I understand the basics of what this means, but I don't know what this looks like because we've never seen it in our lifetimes. And so exactly. I'm like, I, never I don't seen it in this country in our lifetime. Right. So it's like, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to look. Um, am I slightly terrified? Yes. I, I think if you're a sane person, you should be slightly terrified. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people who are more than slightly terrified and still that's a valid expression of emotion. Oh, that's yeah. okay. You can be terrified. And if you don't, if you're not terrified right now, uh, if you're not terrified, I would be it's because concerned you're the terrorist. You. <laughs> yeah, I would be concerned about you, your well-being. Yeah. If you're not <laughs> terrified, it's because you're one of the terrorists. It's it's really that simple at this point. You know, and if truthfully, you are not scared. What's happening? It's because you are one of the perpetrators doing it to the other people. Honestly, you know, that's a very accurate kind of thing because I know a lot of people out there that are just they're so scared of what's happening next and. You know, I don't know what a burned down country looks like other than what we've seen from history. And even then, we have very vague accounts because so much of it has been lost to time. We're talking like follow True, the Roman you, Empire. You do realize, you do know the White House is burnt down before, Oh, yes, ma'am. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm not I think it's be burned surprised. down twice, actually, hasn't it? Um, Maybe. I think you know, I know be Canada Virginia, did it once. Yeah, Canada it Virginia, did it once. And then are? I want to say maybe the slaves. I, I think we're going to go for the hat trick if it's been twice already. But well, no, I mean, I don't know. Um, either way, it has been burned down. I, I don't want to condone burning a building down, but I do want to condone the, you know, something's got to give, something's got to change. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous that we even have to think about this happening, but it's the only way things have ever truly changed in this country before. Yeah. It literally is the only way it has truly changed is when the people have fought. Not when the government tells you what to do, but it's when the people fight back. That is the only way. And, and they're pushing it and they're pushing it and they're pushing it. And I can't believe that at 52 years old, I am going to have to go out and fight for my granddaughter's rights. Something that my yes. grandmother did for me. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to do this. I, I should either. not have to do this. No, I, I will do it. But yes. damn it, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should be having to fight for their rights. In 2022, by now, we have lived on this planet long enough to know that basic human rights are human rights, period, for everybody across the board. 
They should be. And they should be. Religion should yeah. have nothing to do with it. And unfortunately, religion has a lot to do with it. Now, yes, this is a yeah. witchcraft podcast. I will admit that there are aspects of religion here. But I don't classify it more as religion. I classify it more as spiritualism. You yes. can choose you know to what? have if a they religious were spiritual. If these religious people were spiritual, there wouldn't be a problem. Right. And because religion has a lot more dogma associated with it than people really want to admit. A lot of times it's very laid out by somebody else for somebody to teach. That's and why they like it. At, yeah, nobody's looking at the answers. That is why they like it. I, I, I actually, I, I have a degree in uh, communications, which included a lot of marketing classes. Mm -hmm. And a, as more intelligent people <laughs> have a harder time understanding things that less intelligent people enjoy because they seem so crazy to people with more intelligent you know why people they are all those commercials yell at people there's so many commercials that literally just yell at people mm -hmm. and it's because they're going for the people who have low paying jobs and are yelled at by their bosses all day and then when they come home they're yelled at by their spouse or they're yelled at by their kids and that's literally their demographic is people who don't have a backbone. God, that sounds like such a traumatic thing. And isn't it? Because if you yell at somebody who doesn't have a backbone, guess what they do? They do exactly what you want them to do. Wow. So people that don't have backbones really like to be told exactly what to think, exactly what to do. And unfortunately, they get themselves hooked into things like cults. Mm hmm. Yeah, and Christianity has become quite the cult lately. If you're a Christo fascist, let me tell you, there is a big difference between your regular Christian person and a Christo fascist. Christians understand the separation of church and state. Christo fascist says, you all have to live by my laws. Yes. And they don't even yes. read their Bible because if they did, they would know that God has killed a lot of children, including his own. <laughs> yes that was the the first original abortion right there folks god killed his own well, baby there's a, there's abortion, <laughs> abortion is in the bible yes it abortion is. is in the bible and they will sit there and scream no it's not no it's not and it's like read it and they won't read it yes. because then they'll find out that they're wrong Yes. It, it's it's absolutely crazy to think about, you know, um, as somebody who was even raised Christian, I can, you know, go back and go, oh, I, was I, I didn't read my Bible very much because I would go to church every morning or every Sunday morning and they would basically read it to me. It was story time, basically. Um, but of course, that's what they want you to do. They want you to go listen to the preacher and the preacher tells you what to read and all this. But they also tell you, read your Bible. But let's be honest, nobody does read the Bible or very few do. And if you do, but I was, see, I was brought up that way. And mm -hmm. so when they told me to read my Bible, I read it. And then they got pissed because I had questions. Oh, I had lots of questions growing up too, because there were things that they would say <laughs> that didn't sit right. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, like literally Noah's Ark and the, the Garden of Eden. I'm like, where's the dinosaurs? That was, yeah, I asked about dinosaurs. And, and... they're just like, oh, um they didn't exist i literally had a children's minister tell me they didn't exist and i'm like but we have bones yeah. where did those yeah. come from those were planted there <laughs> by liberals <laughs> like, literally it's one of those things that makes you just go i am yeah, like a five-year-old who planted. knows more about this than you do i i'm confused i don't understand how you don't know this but i do <laughs> like can you explain this to me and truthfully they never could so no they can't it, it's such a crazy time that we're having to live through and we're having to challenge so much educational topics and i say educational topics because of the fact that we are having to literally educate human beings on things like medical care things mm -hmm. like puberty and things like that, oh, yeah. that should have been taught to children at young ages. And I'm not saying that we should teach them about sex, but teach them about puberty. Teach them what their bodies are going to go through. Especially exactly. because now we're seeing so many children who are going through puberty at younger ages. Oh, yeah. So much. We Well, we've done that to them, too, with all the hormones and everything. Right. So eight-year-olds shouldn't be getting their period, but they do all the time. Yeah. Yes. 
And yes. according to the Supreme Court, that means they're able to have a baby. It'll kill them, but who cares, right? Oh, that is a terrifying, terrifying thought. It, it's sickening. It's absolutely sickening that Oof. they don't care. They just don't care. No. It's not even an excuse that they care for the baby more. They don't care. They don't care at all. It's a way to control women. That's all it is. It is. And, you know, now we're trying to figure out how do we move forward after basically waking up in a dystopian state? And mm -hmm. how do witches go forward? How do we find our passion through all this rage and our you know positivity through all this rage because yes basically most days since the you know overturning of roe versus wade i pretty much wake up rage filled every day i yeah. i i've called You're myself a, a rage filled <laughs> rage filled cupcake that's what i am now <laughs> yes tomorrow night we're 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 doing a screamathon um we we Sometimes in the summer, we either do, you know, drum circles or we do drive in movies outside and stuff like that. Because I run a church now. My home is actually a church. So this is kind of scary to me, too, because it's a pagan church. And, you know, eventually they're going to come after me for being a pagan. But OK, I, I'm, I'm good with that, too. <laughs> but tomorrow night, yes. instead of a drive in movie, because it's kind of hard to just want to watch a fun movie right now. We decided we're going to do a screamathon. We're just going to scream around the fire as long as we want. I mean, screaming into the void definitely helps. It really yep. does. Uh, you, you know, th and since I live in a very Republican community, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. They're all going to be shooting off their fireworks, and we're just going to be screaming at the top of our lungs. So it's okay. <laughs> That's going to yeah. be interesting to see how well that goes over. Uh, yeah. You'll have to update mm -hmm. me and tell me how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, your spell, your book uh, spells for a good time, the good times. And right now it seems like we don't have any real good times happening right now. Um, the, the good times I'm seeing right now are people who are like, I want to get interested in homesteading. I want to get interested in gardening. How do I do this? Oh, yeah. How do I protect myself? And I'm like, I can help. I know all of these topics. <laughs> Come talk that's to what, me. That's what we've been working <laughs> on around here this year too. We've been doing a lot of that and we're, um, we're in the process of, uh, it's gonna, it's a long process. I didn't realize how long of a process, but we are going to be adding solar panels to the to our home our home and church slash church um mm -hmm. but yeah we've started a lot of interesting things like that and we have we don't have a huge place but we have it's, it's almost two and a half acres mm -hmm. and we're out in the rural area and all of my friends know members of our church know if if things get to where they need to leave where they're at to come here we that's been planned for a long time we have room we can make more room um but we've been this year we've been learning a whole lot more about what naturally grows on our land we've planted a lot of you know fruit trees and other things mm -hmm. too but we're looking at what naturally grows and how it can be used for either medicines or food or yes. whatever yes yes yep. yes and yes it's all going into the church's book of shadows even the stuff that like you know okay so we have a ton of um cleavers we have lots of cleavers right now cleavers can be a source of income at a later date so i mean we're documenting like everything we can about how to help whoever comes next survive yeah because it's like th th this this my home is now in the name of the church so when i'm gone um, my son will officially, he's my assistant, he will take over and it'll be his house to live in. And mm -hmm. my granddaughters have already been told that, you know, someday one of them will be able to take over and run the church. And then this will be their house. And the youngest one has already said, oh, well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the young ones are a little scary. Just to let everyone know, the young ones are oh, terrifying. She is, she is, she is going to be six years old in august oh, she has been awesome. riding a horse for five years or for, for a year i mean she's been riding for a year a little over a year and she's incredibly small for her size to begin with and she is riding um a very large <laughs> a 
ex racehorse and the horse has spooked on her a couple of times. The horse has literally jumped with cheese on it. And that child has 100% the correct intuition and has not had any injuries, has not been thrown. She's stayed on. I mean, she, she comes across as an incredibly experienced horsewoman. Watching her is amazing. And I mean, from the time she first, she climbed up on the horse with no problem. She's mm -hmm. like, I need another step ladder. And they put a step ladder on top of a thing for her. And she did it herself with like no fear because this is what she wants. She has no fear when it's coming to the thing she wants. And I love that. I absolutely love seeing that because there's so much fear in our world. It's, it's yes. nice and refreshing to see this younger generation who's just like, oh, no, 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 no problem. I got it. You know, that speaks a lot to the, the power that's inside of everybody. You know, if you can find something that you are passionate about, that you're just like, I want this and I will stop at nothing to get it. Um, exactly. You know, and that's how we face this. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly how, we face, how we face what's happening to us right now is with our our passion and e even even when we're pissed, I mean, you can you can use that energy, just use it in a responsible way. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it's a really fun thing to kind of think about because, um, you know, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day and they're like, you know, if it the world is really ending at this point, because that's kind of how it feels. They're like, I'm chronically ill and you're chronically ill. We're not really going to be great for, you know, being on the front lines. And I said, no, but I can feed people. You know, all right. Um, um, I have to tell you this. Um, and I've, I've, I've told a few people about this when I've done podcasts. And it's hard for me to even talk about it because I'm getting better at it, but the fact that this happened to me, I seriously thought I was going crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I was in my room one night and I, to get my steps in on my Fitbit, mm -hmm. I usually dance at night before bed. Same. <laughs> Rock and on. That's a good way to do I, it because that's what I do. Yeah. Because I don't like going outside. There's bugs and sunlight. <laughs> Despite yeah, and it me was liking too the hot garden. Right now, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I, I either dance in my room or when it's cooler outside in the evening, I go out and I dance on the deck or something like that. But I was in my room one night and I, I have two windows that look out over my backyard. Mm -hmm. And as I was looking through them, I realized I was seeing two completely different views looking through my back windows. That didn't make any sense. And I started focusing on the one that seemed out of place and I had the most bizarre vision I have ever had in my entire I've never had a vision like that mm -hmm. nothing like that I mean I've had feelings but this was clearly like watching a movie playing outside of my window it was mm -hmm. so weird and I saw all of this crazy stuff happen I saw all these people wearing masks and I saw this this city get almost completely leveled with an explosion and it was out by the water and then I, I i saw i saw people climbing up the fucking side of the capitol building and i saw all this crazy shit i saw myself walking down the road with a little green cart to go and get toilet paper and milk from the national guard that was driving by and dropping it off at the end of the road for people to get their rations i mean i saw all of this weird shit but then i also saw my daughter and my granddaughters and their granddaughters and their granddaughters until the age of 96 i was 96 years old and see it just even thinking about it i start crying again mm -hmm. i was 96 year old surrounded by generations of my girls mm -hmm. And so much of the things I saw in that vision have happened. Mm -hmm. I was, when the first book that I had written in a long time was coming out, it was Wake, Bake, and Meditate. It was, it was a year before the 420 Meditations. I wrote that book in 2019 and 2018. The end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019 is when I wrote Wake, Bake, and Meditate. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend on my deck in the fall 
of 2019 and we were planning book signings. I had book signings set up in five states and we were planning this huge release in the town next to mine where we were literally gonna have like this huge vendor fair that was all pot themed stuff. Oh, that's um, awesome. <laughs> movie theater and we were going to play up in smoke we were going to have a woodstock themed party at this coffee shop that was opening a new event room we had all of this stuff planned and i was sitting on my deck and i'm like i'm having so much fun planning all of this and planning stuff again that i'm not going to stop even though none of it's going to happen and she turned and looked at me and she says what are you talking about and i said none of this is going to happen I said, the, the book launch is never going to get to happen. And she says, why would you say that? And I said, because by May 1st, and the book was coming out on May 8th, I said, the world is going to be so fucked up that we aren't going to be going anywhere. This is never going to happen. And it oh, didn't shit. happen. It sure the hell did not happen. I saw this coming years before it happened. And when I keep telling people we ain't there yet, we ain't there yet. We ain't there yet. They're like, what are you, how can you say we haven't hit bottom yet? And I'm like, because we haven't hit bottom. Nothing ever changes until you hit bottom. Mm -hmm. You have to hit the worst of it before it ever gets better. And we've had so many times in history where we've started to go down and things get better. We start to go down and things get better. Things aren't starting to get better and we've been going down for a long time. Yes. This is when we are going to hit rock bottom. Astrologically speaking, the United States should fall. And we're doing it. We are falling. We are falling desperately. So did I, I think at the time when I had this vision, I thought maybe I was nuts. And then the more things that keep happening, the more I keep saying, y'all don't know what the hell we are in for. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And I don't think they will ever consider what happens in this country to be a civil war because they won't do that. They're never going to call it a civil war. No, I don't because think they that would. will make us look bad. Yeah, it, it's we're all about appearances. So we're all about appearances to you know obviously um any sort of premonitions and stuff like that are always subjective because the future can change but we have to make the changes to make those changes to make that happen exactly and exactly so you kind of having a little bit of that insight what would you recommend for people what can they start doing today to help them prepare the biggest for thing anything? i think people need to do is realize honestly that it is going to get worse. Get together everything you need. Um, as, as a lot of people have been recommending, if you are in the alphabet mafia, get all of your legal paperwork taken care of because I, I have no doubt, I have no doubt these idiots are going to turn it over. Mm -hmm. They're going to take away people's rights to even be married. So I, I, I think, yes, we have, you have to prepare. We're not going to stop what is happening right now. We have no way to stop what is happening right now legally. Mm -hmm. Unless the president does something, the people, the people have no legal ramifications right now other than if they decide to overthrow the government. What else do we have? That's, you know, you can't change who's in office until there's another election. Yeah, right. You can't. And even then they're saying that the election that November could be really ugly and really bloody. Yeah, it could it, it could get really bad. Who knows how it's going to go? We can hope it's going to go our way. But if it doesn't, it's going to get very bad. So what do we need to do? We know prices are going to keep skyrocketing. So stock up. That doesn't mean go into the grocery store and buy every single pack <laughs> of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that. I'm sure some of the folks that bought all of the like truckloads of toilet paper in you know 2020, y'all might still have some. So good they for you. They probably still have it. Yeah, <laughs> but they at the still same have time, it. Um, yeah, you know, please don't be that person to do that. That would be it, terrible. Yeah, don't don't be that person. But stock up on things. Start looking. We we need to be building far better communities than what we have far, far, far better communities than what we have. 
We need communities where we have people that can care for kids while the mm -hmm. other people are out doing whatever it is they need to do. And when I say that, I don't mean daycare centers. No. Those cost money. I mean, we, we need to build need, villages, literal villages to help villages, people. Exactly. That I, that's why I, I have always wanted to run a commune. Seriously. Same. I've always wanted a commune. And when they had that, what was it like 26? No, it was a billion dollars, a billion dollar lottery. If I won that, I was seriously going to buy Same. all my neighbors houses <laughs> and kick them the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally I was just, it was just I, I the funny thing is my husband and I had literally planned out we're like okay we're gonna play it if we win what would we do like we need to have a plan today because obviously the government's gonna take their share because taxes and all yep. that bullshit but you know what is our plan and we had literal plans of finding all the people that we knew would be successful yeah. community members, obviously, because, you know. Same thing. And Same thing. I was just going to go door to door. Tiny houses. And say, hey, we will build you a tiny house. Come live with us. Come work farms with us. Come help us grow things. Come help us raise animals. Come help us hunt and do all the cool stuff together. Let's build a community together. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to basically finance the building of a small town. Yep. And you know obviously There's a lot of it going on now win too. but we wanted to and even if the, that ever came out i would absolutely still do that and now um there's a group of us that are actually trying to build a virtual kind of community commune um to where we're able to uh you know mail each other your stuff where we're bartering teaching how to homestead teaching how to grow things uh activism uh self-defense because that's a thing everybody needs thing. to know it yep. um so yeah we're actually in the process of doing that and we've actually the funny thing is we started it at the beginning of june we literally start it oh, wasn't wow. even meant to be this big of a thing it was literally just a thing where i'm like you know i kind of think this would be a good idea i would like to start this and my business partner kyle and i literally he was like no i'm i'm on board with this let's do it and it after the row overturning it just exploded into yep. everything it needed to be and i'm like that's not what i had envisioned but i'm really glad that we did it because it's even better than i thought it was going to be i thought it was just going to be helping people start gardens and you know doing some other stuff and you know just teaching some stuff that obviously people would need for tomorrow but exactly now like, if i ever get the community. money i want a second story on my house just so i can add all bedrooms so that more people can move in Yes, that would be so awesome. I mean, truthfully, like we need to be doing this. And the other thing too is if you're somebody that has a community like this that is willing to help and other people grow, that's the big thing. Help other people grow in whatever yes. skills they need. If you're willing to be that, reach out to these other communities and let's all become one big community with several branches. Because- oh, I think about back when I was a kid, which was, you know, in the seventies, our, I mean, my, my family was, you know, very Christian. Everybody mm -hmm. back then was pretty much very Christian, especially since I lived in the town of Zion, Illinois, which was a town started by a pastor, which he thought was going to be the perfect utopia. Mm -hmm. And he put it where he did because it was halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Look it up sometime. It's hysterical to read about it. Um, but yes, Zion, Illinois, um, my road as a child until I was like six, seven years old, literally still had grass growing up the middle of the road. It was not even gravel. It was a dirt road. Mm -hmm. But where we lived at the time, you know, my aunts and uncles lived next to us and grandma and grandpa on the other side. Most of the families out there had gardens right. and each one would focus on something different. So that that way you were trading like one of them would do beans and peas. Somebody else would do the corn. And then you would trade your food. Yes. <laughs> so that you were only focusing on one type of crop. And that way, if your crops failed, there was still other food coming from other people. Yes. And, and I mean, we were just a, a little tiny community of like six, seven houses that we did that. It's we we genius, need to be paying though. more attention to farmers markets. We need to be doing, we need to be doing better. 
We just need to start doing better. Yes. The new thing I'm seeing today is all the people mad at Target because Target donates so much money to Republican parties and these people did not know that. Why did they not know that? Because they never bothered to look until now. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't shopped in Target or Walmart in years and there's reasons for that. But people are just, I mean, it's like, okay, I'm glad they finally looked, but why did they wait till now? Why? You know, they've waited this long. It took losing their rights to have control over their own body before they started getting interested enough and to find out what they're doing to themselves. Well, you know, it, it's kind of, we've seen it in fiction, we've seen it in history, even that, you know, nobody speaks out nobody talks about it nobody wants to see it nobody wants to pay attention to what's going on around them because they don't want to be involved and right. i think we are past mm. a time and you know as witches especially <laughs> you know as a group that has been persecuted literally for centuries we cannot yep. sit on the sidelines we can't help no, our other we, people we, we can't. in this world by sitting on the sidelines and like, well, they came for us once, so we better not say anything. No, we need to be out there helping them just as much because we know exactly, exactly what it, it's it, like. In this whole vision thing I had, um, my, my son likes to laugh at me about it because I told him I was not gonna die of COVID. I had absolutely, I knew I was not gonna die of COVID. I knew I was gonna get it, had it twice, thank you. Got all of my shots and everything else, but I knew <laughs> COVID was not going to kill me. However, I always figured, well, I, I shouldn't say figured. I knew it was going to kill the other mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I always said, we all knew she couldn't get it. It would kill her. And it, it did. But I, I've told my son that I know. I, I have been running this group for almost 20 years. And it wasn't until December. It was Yule of 2020 that we decided to go ahead and take this group and make it into an officially recognized religious organization with state and federal government mm -hmm. and it took me a long long time to decide to do that and I don't think when I decided to do it, it it wasn't just a whim obviously it was meant to be when it happened because I have felt that I need to be here when this shit is over with mm -hmm. I know that I am meant to be here to help pick up the pieces and put things back together when this is over with. And I firmly believe that the, this group that I have is gonna be a part of that. Yeah. And that's why it became, and I'm, I, I, I won't be surprised if they try to come after us for being a pagan group. Good luck. I'm, I, I have protections too. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the thing that we all should be paying attention to. And, you know, obviously, like I said last week um, on the show uh, for everyone who's listening, that normally this isn't a really political podcast, but I am now kind of coming to the conclusion that we can't sit idly by and just talk about the things that make us happy anymore because those are being stripped away from us. Exactly. So we have to be involved and talk about the things that are not exactly comfortable. And right now, the world we're living in is a very uncomfortable place to be in. Um, I don't know how many times a week I say I want out of this timeline um, because oh. this is not the timeline I signed up for. But yet here I am. So <laughs> uh, yet, you know, we have to continue to fight. We have to continue to do the things and we have to come together as a community, you know. I don't really care which branch of paganism you follow. I care if you're a decent human being that cares about human rights. That's what I care about. Exactly. I care if you are a good person. I don't care who you worship. And that goes for Christians too. I don't care if you want to worship Jesus. But as long as Just you don't are... make me worship him. <laughs> I mean, Jesus and I are cool. Like, I'm cool with Jesus. Like, Jesus and I, I'm like, I'm cool if... with Jesus too because the people that they're worshiping yes. is not Jesus. Yes, you know, and it, that's the that, thing. That's if, not Jesus. If they I have... if I had the ability to fist bump Jesus as you know, just in passing, like going to you know commune with my gods and all that, be like, "What's up, Jesus? How's it going?" Fist bump, walk out. That's that's literally how cool I am with Jesus. I have no issues I'm, with him. I'm, I'll tell you what, I've, I've always been cool with the dude, but I'm getting to the point where if he don't get his ass back here to get his good people off of this planet, I will start to get a little pissed. 
<laughs> I mean, he's probably afraid to come back because they'd probably crucify him again. Let's be honest. Uh <laughs> true it, it, it's a, kind of a scary thing but the thing is we need to be talking about this we need to be working together and if you are somebody that you're like i have no idea what i could do to help reach out to carrie reach out to me we will help you find a spot for you to help out in some way because everybody has a talent or has something that they can yes. help with or if you don't know anything and you want to be like hey i want to learn how to garden but i don't know where to start you can still reach out there's lots of people who will teach you and they will teach you with the utmost kindness and help you try not to fail your first go around. And even if you do, it's still a learning experience. It is. We also, you know, something else I think we really, we really need to learn because we have been taught so long now that so much is just disposable. Yes. And I don't mean that just as, as, like packaging or, or things. I mean, everything. We are taught that so much in life is just disposable and it's not. It really isn't. We can't just keep acting like everything is going to go away if we don't pay attention to it because that's not how it works. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's truly not. And, you know, that's kind of one of the things that in our group too that we're trying to do is trying to learn how to sew to mend your own clothes. So your clothes last exactly. longer. Um, how to craft things in order for you, like if you need something for winter, can you craft it? Maybe. If not, maybe someone will craft it for you. Maybe you can do a bartering system. These are all systems that we have outdated because basically as much as we all don't like to talk about the big C, but capitalism is the one that is telling you that you need to go buy a new thing. Yes. And, and it makes us, it makes life easier. It makes life easier. It gives you more time for this. And you know what? We have made ourselves lazy and incompetent in many fields mm -hmm. because of it. And we, yeah, we need to stop doing that. I, we do have a girl in our group who she can sew and she's willing to teach people how to sew. And, and we do need to do, start doing that. You know, there's no reason why we can't throw a patch on a pair of jeans like we always did yes. for a hundred years, <laughs> people threw a patch on their jean instead of going out and buying a new $80 pair. Truthfully, that was actually all the rage in like the early nineties was patchwork jeans. And yeah. you could buy them. You could buy literally holy jeans that had patches on them. For 80 bucks. For like yeah. 80 bucks, which was ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, I, and the funny thing is, I don't know how many pairs of jeans growing up I had that eventually got to the point where they were worn out and basically became scrap. And I would cut pieces off of, you know, that were still good off of them and patch my other pairs of jeans with them. I know it sounds like something that's like, wow, that like, were you really poor? No, I wasn't really poor. I just didn't want to spend 80 bucks on a new pair of jeans. Yeah. Literally. And it's what people did. Uh -huh. It's what people used to do. And it seems like we have no clue how Americans used to live even, you know, 60 years ago. I am only 52 years old and I know how different things are now. Yes. I can remember going into grocery stores and there hardly being a produce section. Because mm -hmm. most people grew their own. Because most people grew their own and we weren't shipping food all over the country back then. Mm -hmm. It was usually We weren't goods importing or... a bunch of stuff. People do not understand how much convenience we have now compared to what we used to. And we have gotten ourselves so used to everything being convenient that we think it's too much hard work. And you know what, when it all goes away, <laughs> then the work seems even harder if you haven't prepared for it ahead of time. You know, and that's something, you know, I talk about the fact that I don't really like capitalism, but I do know that there is a need for some capitalism. Obviously, if you don't have a dehydrator, you should probably invest in one. Use capitalism to I invest in things. Yep, things I that will last. I just got a blast. dehydrator again. Yes. Uh, I have a dehy. I have two, uh, soon to be two. I just ordered another one. Um, I will have two dehydrators. I have two crock pockets. I have an Instapot. I have a vacuum sealer. I have all sorts of things. The only thing I don't have is a food meal. That's the only thing I don't own. And that's because it's mm. a little out of my price range. But beyond that, yeah. I own pretty much all things to actually preserve my own food. And, you know, that's the thing. If we're investing in ourselves and what we're doing, then yeah, your your grocery bill is probably going to go down because you're going to be growing your own food. Yes, it is an investment. Yes, it is something that you're like, oh, well, you know, I, money's kind of tight here. 
check out other people who might have them that just bought new ones and their other one still works great. Most of those oh, yeah. take care of them the last literally forever. So, so much crazy stuff, but we have talked all about this stuff. And the truth is you can be involved. You can do something right now. And magic can be incorporated into all of these things. You want to have a garden that grows better? Put some sigil work in your garden. Put a garden blessing over oh, your yeah. garden. Um, you want to have your food preserved and your food protected. Put protected sigils on all of your jars. And just do it with a dry erase marker. Or a Sharpie. If you want to keep it with Sharpie, that's fine too. Um, but dry erase markers work great for that. There's so much cool stuff that you can be doing magically in addition to practically. But right now, I do believe as witches and as people and as human beings, we need to be doing more practical than witchy. Witchy is definitely still a place and we all should be doing it and should be incorporating it. But as you even stated in your book, if you're not doing the mundane work, your magical stuff is not going to work. Exactly. You always have to do both. Yes. So, uh, Carrie, where can people go to find out more about you? You know, um, how can they find out about this group, especially if there's somebody that's local to you? Um, uh, um, um, my my website is uh, carrieconner.com, and it's because nobody can spell my name right. It's actually K E R R I C O N N O R. Um, I'm on there. The group is the Gathering Grove, and we do have um, a Facebook page for okay. the Gathering Grove itself. Um, there's actually two pages. There's one that is like where you can friend and then there's one that you can follow. We did it both ways. So, um, 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 but then I'm on, I'm on Facebook, um, Carrie Connor author, author Carrie Connor on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to find me because nobody else spells their name the way I do. <laughs> <laughs> same on Instagram, same on TikTok. I, uh, I deleted my Twitter account when Musk said he was going to buy it. So, you know. <laughs> I, I waited to see if the sale went through, but the sale did not go through, so I still have my Twitter. So <laughs> I wasn't using it. I, I hadn't oh, that's used, fair. I used That's fair. Yeah, I wasn't really using it. And I'm just like, he's gonna what? No, I'll just get rid of it now. <laughs> to be fair, Twitter is like an angry shit show most days, so you're not missing much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if anything really big happens, my kid lets me know immediately. So. Yeah, that's pretty much how it, it, it should be is, you know, just check on the, the important stuff. Um, but that's cool that you're on TikTok um, because TikTok is my new favorite place in the whole wide world. I love TikTok. Honestly, I... I did not like TikTok at first. I, I'm I like, didn't either. My daughter was on it, and I'm like, <laughs> what on earth is this crap? And I like it more now. And one of the reasons why I like it so much more now is I have been able to find so many more people that are of similar mind yes. on TikTok than I have on any other social media. Yes, yes, you know, yes. I, 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 I have made some great friends on TikTok from meeting him online. And I mean, we meet up in person and stuff now too, but I definitely have found far more similar people to me on TikTok than on anything else and built real relationships. You know, and that's the thing that TikTok has fostered so many great friendships and so many great people. And, and, you know, so many people that every time I see their videos, I'm like, oh, hey, it's my friend. I don't even know these people in real life, but I'm like, I feel like I know you because I watch so many of your videos. Um, but it, it's so true that TikTok is my happy place nowadays as far as social media stuff goes. Uh, but yes, th all of these links to all of Carrie's stuff will obviously be in the show description. Uh if you guys want to know more about how to get involved, get in contact with Carrie, get in contact with me, get in contact with Kyle from Revelator Network, um, the podcast uh, hosting network. You can do so many other great things. And the thing is, everybody's capable of doing it. No matter where you are in life, I promise you, you are capable of doing this. You are capable of being the best version of yourself. And that is what we need to be working on today is being the best versions of ourselves and helping each other out. So, yes everybody please stay safe please take care of yourselves uh if you're going to be out in the world make sure you're being safe make sure you're being covid safe as well because covid's still a thing um also those covid safety precautions also work for all the new diseases that are popping up so be careful about those as well uh but that's a whole nother thing that we'll talk about a oh, yeah. different day uh <laughs> but you guys be careful and remember that we're always thinking about you so take care everybody Bye bye Bye, that was fun. <laughs>